Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to look at the test results for the Alpha Antenna, so-called uh, Hex Antenna. Uh, the name Hex actually refers to the center element that everything screws into that happens to be a 3D printed uh, Hex box. And more about the 3D printed in just a minute. Now, the last video showed the unboxing of this antenna. Um, I had uh, mentioned in one of my Ask Dave columns uh, that I did not know of any U.S. manufacturer other than Chameleon now who uh, made double loop uh, mag loop antennas. And he says, uh, oh yes, there is one. Uh, this is Vernon WA7JFO. He said it's an uh, alpha antenna. Um, there are two antenna builders uh, for amateur radio that start with an A. There's the alpha antenna, and then there's aero antenna. Uh, aero antenna makes uh, mostly VHF, UHF type things. I have one of their antennas. I've had it for many, many years and still for sale. Same identical antenna. Works very well. Now, alpha antennas, I actually hadn't heard of till it was pointed out to me. One of their main products is not the double loop uh, mag loop, but rather a dipole, um, tiny bit reminiscent of the buddy pole, but really quite different, that has two telescoping uh, elements and that go out at the, the top of the... A vertex. So each one goes out at an angle. They go up and kind of slope down. And that'll work on 20 through 2 meters. Okay, just by telescoping the antenna in. Now it is said that it will also operate on uh, the 40 meters if you attach some extenders, uh, little wire extenders to the uh, ends of those uh, telescoping antennas. So we set it up now, the price is uh, $600 at alphaantenna.com, plus shipping, of course. Um, all of the parts that are in the antenna are shown in the previous video, uh, which is the one that shows the unboxing. Basically, there is a tripod, a very sturdy tripod that if you take out into a park, you step on these little levers and it'll kind of anchor it in the ground for you. There's a little thing hanging underneath the... Uh, antenna that you can like hang a bucket half filled with water something to really hold it down however the actual um, wires used in that thing are really dinky and I think they'll bend uh, very quickly now um, we set the thing up on 20 meters and which seems to be sort of its native habitat this is with the elements all the way extended and then back a little bit and it will work across the entire 40 meters. It's not, it's, uh, I know it's a compromise antenna because it's close to the ground, but it's not really a compromise antenna in terms of performance. And I just want to show you what I was able to do with it. This is my, my log. Um, and starting right here on the Valentine's Day, two there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the twelfth one was a guy in Spain. So all the others were stateside. There was a contest going on, a school roundup, uh, where school stations would get on and try to talk to other people or other school stations. And then I got a couple of guys uh, there, and it was pretty cool. Okay, the... Um, Let's see. So I made a bunch of notes, and I'm going to go through these and talk about them. Um, we tried to set the antenna up for 40 meters, which you do by clipping on some add-ons and then taking the elements out uh, to their full length and then pushing them into the ground, oddly enough, uh, to hold them out in place. We had very poor results. Um, we had a very hard time tuning it never really did tune it successfully. Obviously, we're doing something wrong, but the 
But the only instructions for the antenna are this little card. It's got the hex antenna, and it's got some lengths on the back that you put the thing to. Now, once you've extended this thing all the way out, the telescoping antenna will bend quite a bit. It is impossible, uh, for us anyway, both of us tried it, my wife tried it, to screw in that, that uh, telescoping antenna when it is telescoped all the way out. It just bends and there's just no way to do it. You have to collapse it, then screw it in, and then pull it out little by little, working from next to the antenna. Pull it out little by little and uh, then bring it back a little bit to get it to the right length. It's actually a little too long for 20 meters and so uh, you can pull the thing back in. Now it's interesting, the factory photo of the hex antenna out in the uh, Badlands uh, National Park uh, showed the antenna out there and then right underneath it they had put a coil of coax to serve as a choke ballon on the thing. Nothing about that is mentioned in this little instruction card. Um, we did not do that. Um, I just connected directly to it with my standard test cable that I use. It compares very favorably with the uh, step IR, big IR antenna on 20 meters too. Everything worked really well. Okay, so um, when we tried it in the vertical configuration, it was just no joy. It just wouldn't tune. You know, it seemed to have a, a, a low, like 14 point, or uh, let's see, about 6.8 megahertz. When we shortened the antenna, it did not move. And we, I don't know what we did wrong, but we, and we did have the counterpoise out. Didn't, didn't work terribly well. Now, um, I also tried out the antenna on 20 meters on Whisper and got very good results. I was very pleased with it. Uh, just put it on 20 meter Whisper. I've got a small little uh, um, Zactec uh, Whisper transmitter uh, and it worked just fine. We got some very good results with it, including a couple overseas contacts. Now, um, okay, we had an accident with the antenna. Um, we left it overnight. It uh, stretched out like it was. Uh, we did not know that a front was going to blow through, and it did, and it blew the antenna over. Now, my first thought was those telescoping uh, extensions. If we bent one of those, it'd be nearly impossible to bring it back to where it was. It would just have to be replaced. But that is not where the problem was. The problem was with that little uh, hex hub, the thing in the middle. It's a 3D printed uh, contraption and the problem is you know the printer goes around in a circle like this and builds the thing up <clears throat> which allows the other side the other layer to cool just a little bit before it gets a new layer on top of it and if you put any kind of twist forces on it it can cause the 3d printing to delaminate and that is precisely what it did. And you can see in this picture how it delaminated almost all the way around. So we came up with this idea where we unscrewed the screws holding on the cover and drilled them out just a little bit so that they would accept number eight uh, screws, two and a half inches long, that went all the way through to the other side. <laughs> So we use the grinder to take off the excess uh, to keep those things from being a safety hazard because they were uh, quite sharp out there.
So that reinforcement of the hex box um, and the amount of metal that's put in right at the very center of the box is not enough to worry about or think about. Uh, but we strengthened that box considerably to the point where uh, I don't have any qualms about it uh, coming apart further. Now, I note that the uh, cracks are the same size that they were, but um, the, the whole thing is held together very securely. I was originally thinking of putting bolts through and then bolting through so it would squeeze it, but we ended up doing this just with the bolt all the way through. Now, to use this thing for any length of time outdoors, I'm going to have to take that hex thing and seal those cracks so we don't get water inside. And I think at the same time, I'll put a weep hole in the bottom. Okay, so um, that was the accident. The thing is uh, put together. When we tried it in the vertical configuration, we compared it to the big IR, and uh, that's my step IR vertical. And th there's just no comparison. The big IR works properly. The alpha was just very much down in terms of what it would receive. This is the step IR vertical, the alpha vertical, step IR vertical, alpha vertical, step IR vertical, alpha vertical, step IR vertical, alpha vertical, step IR vertical. Now, um, I mentioned a couple problems. The very large heavy tripod, the hook underneath is vastly too small. You want something that can like hold a five gallon bucket of water five times uh, eight pounds per gallon uh, is 40 pounds, you know, and if you put a 40 pound bucket under there, that antenna is not, or that tripod's not going to fall over. Now note that the way the tripod is made, the legs don't go out to a certain angle. They go all the way out. So you're holding the thing really by wiggling how the top is sitting on that tripod be nice to have a tripod that would go out and then stop so you would know what you need to do with that but um, it is a large heavy tripod um, now and I just want to conclude uh, with a picture of Aiden holding up the vertical antenna I could not have done any of this without his help and I greatly appreciate it so there you have it. Um, if you would like to get one of these antennas, they do work well in the dipole configuration uh, for 20 meters and above. I'm leery of trying to do it on, uh, six, on uh, 40. Try, I'm leery of doing it on 40. Uh, but for 20 and above, it works great. Uh, I know the thing is only about five feet high. We had ours on the deck, so it was about seven or eight feet above uh, the ground level. And it was right up next to the house. And yet I was just uh, getting QSO after QSO after QSO when I was trying that out. I'm very pleased to say that it worked really well on the air. And these weren't just FT8 contacts either. These were actual single sideband contacts. A couple of them I threw the amp on. Uh, just because the signal on the other end was a little weak and I wanted them to hear me. Uh, but uh, they will take up to the legal limit, okay? So it will take quite a bit of power. Um, do I recommend this antenna? Um, if you're going to use it like parks on the air uh, for 20 meters and above, yeah, sure. It's um, an antenna that's not very hard to put up. I would work a little harder to keep it from tipping over, but that antenna will work just fine. Note that in measuring the antenna, this instructions gives the length that like on 40, uh, 20 meters, the telescoping thing should be 16 feet, 11 and a half inches long. It is easier to uh, put the antenna in all compacted 
pull the thing all the way out, making sure that you're not leaving a section behind, okay? Clip the whole thing out and then pull it back from the 17 feet, 9 inches that it is by uh, 10 inches. So you just take one of the elements and put it back into the other by 10 inches. And then you measure your SWR to see if it's right. And we were able to do that very quickly and that thing worked. So for that kind of a use case, a use case like POTA or field day or something like that on 20 or some band above that, yeah, it's a great antenna. Works very, very well. Um, the It doesn't have loading on it, whereas the buddy pole does have loading, but this does not have loading on it. And so you don't have any loss in the loading, and it does cover the full band. Uh, so you don't have any problem with that. Uh, when you put a lot of loading on an antenna, it, you start to run into problems where it doesn't cover the full band. But we saw that here. So there you go. There's my view of it. A uh, very interesting antenna. I want to say thanks again to Steve, who is the founder of Alpha Antenna. He, instead of sending me that uh, uh, double loop, uh, mag loop, sent me this uh, Hextenna Deluxe. And again, that's available at the alphaantenna.com website. Steve is the founder. Unfortunately, the website does not give... Um, call sign to the people that work there or anything like that. So we'll just say Steve, and I'm assuming he's a ham. Probably amateur extra class with good uh, luck with DX and so on. So there you have it. We're done. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel, like the video, click the bell, and uh, tell people about it. And until we next meet, 73.